David Swig is a professor emeritus at the Hong Kong University of Science and Technology. He joins us now from New York. It is good to have you on the show, sir. Um, this you. relationship has been compared to uh, a second Cold War. Is it really? And can the two sides actually find a way to coexist despite their disagreements? Well, we haven't moved into a Cold War yet. I think that everybody's worried that it could go that way. And I think it's important that both gentlemen show that they're very aware of that. I mean, look at the smiles. Um, this was a really uh, great photo opportunity. And um, I think they both recognize that uh, they need what uh, I think Biden calls a kind of responsible competition. Um, and sees, if you listen to sees words, I mean, they're words, it's rhetoric, but, but it's important that they met and uh, they know each other, as you may know, and your audience may know, these guys have known each other for well over a decade. I think that brings some advantage to their their meeting, and they're both quite blunt. You know, I think they're both pretty uh, forward, uh, you know, forthright with each other about the problems. Um, it may be a, a nice photo op, but the reality is right. that there are a bag of issues. Uh, which do you think is the one that's going to continue to be a thorn in this relationship? Is it Taiwan? Is it North Korea? Uh, human rights issues, whether it's uh, the Uyghur issue or Hong Kong or, or, or technology. Right. I think that the two issues that are likely to be continuing is technology and Taiwan. The two T's, right? Yeah. Technology and Taiwan. Um, technology because, you know, both of these guys, well, particularly sees a man in a hurry. C wants to bring about the reju what he calls the great rejuvenation of the Chinese nation and believes that he will do it best through uh, science, technology, uh, and you know, uh, making China's economy the, the best economy in the world. Biden, on the other hand, uh, very much wants to slow that process down uh, and wants to maintain his own or the American dominance, American leadership. Uh, so they're not trying to stop China, but they certainly want to keep ahead of China. And one of the ways they've decided to do that is to just not share the technology, a lot of the technology uh, that has kept America ahead. Uh, so I think the technology is an issue there. But that's not going to lead to a fight, uh, though some people look at it and say this is like the Japan when the Americans cut off the energy oil for the Japanese before World War II. Taiwan, on the other hand, reflects the territorial. So now we have another T, right? Uh, the territorial imperative. And there you've got Taiwan, the East China Sea, the South China Sea. And uh, Taiwan itself, um, I think, is, is a potential uh, a flashpoint. But again, uh, the leader of, of well, at least for a couple of years, it's not going to be uh, as big a problem. Uh, Tsai Ing-wen, the leader of uh, Taiwan, has been res extremely responsible uh, in her dealings with uh, China. Uh, but uh, in about two years from now, there could be a new leader in Taiwan who's much more pro-independence and if that happens, then you've got a real risk. Okay, let's uh, let's expand on, on this second T. I mean, Taiwan. I mean, the president said that, you know, we firmly stand by our one China policy. As you were speaking, I know that you caught the pictures. It was um, a House Speaker Nancy Pelosi making that controversial right. visit to, to Taiwan back, back in August. Um, where does it leave the U.S.'s official position? Well, the official U.S. position, I think, is pretty clear, which is that they do not want to see Taiwan declare independence. Uh, the whole idea um, of strategic ambiguity, which was America's policy, was to try and make sure that Taiwan, it's not a strategic ambiguity gets misunderstood. That's not a warning to China. That you know, Biden's been very clear. If you attack Taiwan with no provocation from the Taiwanese side, we're going to be there and not, you know, to defend Taiwan. And I think that that's been that way for a long time. The strategic ambiguity is the message to Taiwan, which is basically to say, if you guys try declare independence or take steps that move towards greater independence and China attacks you, you can't be sure that we're going to be there. And that's a way that the United States has over the last, uh, oh, I'd say, 15 years, tried very hard to make sure that when the DPP, when the uh, sort of pro-independence party gets in power, they don't do things mm -hmm. that are too provocative uh, and give China the reason, Pelosi's, uh, the reason to attack. And Pelosi's visit was not 
very good on that because, in fact, it gave China the the excuse to carry out major military activities in the region, which yeah. otherwise would have really they just would have been in terrible, you know, great criticism for that um, for, for all the missile tests and the and the the planes flying around Taiwan. The, okay. It would have been seen much worse uh, had Pelosi not not gone to to Taiwan. So in some ways, Pelosi gave China the chance to do that. So as long as in future things remain reasonably calm and Biden does not, you know, send uh, his vice president to Taiwan, mm -hmm. um, then I think things will, will okay. remain quiet until the new leader, ta a new leader takes over Taiwan. And that could be in two years. All right, Professor David Swig, thank you very much for joining us here on Tier 2 World. I do appreciate My your pleasure. analysis. Thank you.